Hi there, Linda Goodall here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to piece Crazy Patch in the hoop. It's a little futzy, but it's way faster than doing it by hand. So lately I've been on this binge making hand embroidery stitches as machine stitches in Hatch. And these are all motifs, and what they look like is decorative sewing, machi decorative sewing machine stitches from a high-end sewing machine. So I'm going to let the cameraman zoom in so we can take a look at the stitches on these two journal covers. So I think you can see all these pretty decorative stitches that are reminiscent of Victorian crazy patch stitches. And these are all pieced in the hoop. They're stitched in the hoop. This one was appliqued in the hoop. Now the, the other one, this one over here, this one is pieced as a block and then you have to do something with it. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to do the piecing, how to do the applique. We'll make the journal cover in another video, but we are doing the embroidery for another journal cover here, so you'll see how to do that. So let's take a look at what we need to do. So the way crazy piecing in the hoop works, it's like foundation piecing at the sewing machine. At the sewing machine, we're going to have a printed template. We're going to lay our pieces down, stitch them, flip them, and, and that sort of thing. At the embroidery machine, we're actually going to stitch our pattern into the hoop and then put our pieces down. Now, because it's a little bit different, it works better when you pre-cut your pieces close to size so that it doesn't get too messy. And what I've done is I've included a template, a pattern that you can print. It's a PDF, so make sure you print it at actual size or the pieces won't fit right. But what I've done is I've actually put a quarter inch seam allowance around all of the elements. I've engineered the seam, so I don't know if you can see down here, it's cut off so that it'll match easier. And they're also numbered. They're numbered so you know what order they go down. And they're also, an, there's an arrow that points to the seam and that's the piece, that's what's going to get stitched down. So that's the side that you want to match. So we're going to split all these apart and then we're going to pick our fabrics. And here are the fabrics that I'm using for the project that I'm going to do today. And they're just, you know, uh, petite kind of fabrics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those pieces and after I've cut them out, I'm going to take a glue stick, smear a little bit on the back, and then I'm going to place it on here. So that I can then cut it out. Now you don't have to be exactly precise, but it's good to be neat because it does add up if you get too messy. So those are my fabrics, and I've already cut all of my fabrics out. And here I have them all laid out so that they're ready to go. Now I do still have my pattern pieces on there. I recommend that you leave your pattern pieces on until you're ready to sew. And when we get to the sewing step, I'll show you why that is, because it's easier to figure out what way they go down. So I did say that we're making a journal cover in here, and I've got mine already hooped, but I made me a cheat sheet. So this is an actual pattern for my journal cover, and my covers are just for these basic composition notebooks. I use a lot of these. I have tons of these that are full, and I have more sitting around, and it's just nice to have something on there that doesn't look so schoolroom. So I've mocked up a pattern for me, and in the other video on how to make the journal cover, I'll show you how to measure and what you need to do. But I wanted to make this so I would know where to place my heart. So if I lay this over my hoop, you can see that this is the center of my um, journal cover. You may not be able to see that line. It's kind of fine. But I am lining it up with the racing stripes that I've put on my hooping station. And it won't fit in the hoop. Here's the edge of my hoop, here's the edge of my um, fabric. So I'm going to put an extension out there. I'm just going to do a two inch extension. You may have to do something different to get it in the hoop. I really think it's important to hoop between the rings. The hoop is part of the stabilizing process and you'll get a much better sew out if you hoop between the rings. You'll get less puckering, you'll get a much nicer sew out. So I recommend hooping between the rings. So I've used these guides to chalk a line where I want the center of my design. And this is the actual size of my design. It fits a 5 by 7 hoop. So you can see that I have a 5 by 7 hoop here. And here is where it connects. So 
it's actually going to be sewn sideways because that's the only way I can get it in this five by seven inch hoop. So I've hooped it, I've marked it, and I've used the guides on my hooping station to get it all hooped and straight, and now that's ready to sew. So I have my fabrics ready, I have my hoop ready, and we're going to get ready to sew. Now, I did say that the block one is not finished. So you're just gonna have, a, have this when you're done. It's a block. It's ready to be pieced into something else. So um, another thing I should tell you is the monogram that I put in the center is not included with the set. This is just a monogram from one of the sets I have in my software. I'm sure you have monograms in your software. If you don't want to put a monogram there, you can leave it blank. You could put another design in there. Doesn't matter. It's just a nice little space for a monogram. So I think we're ready to get sewing. What you'll need is your fabrics already cut. You'll need a glue stick and you will need a, let's see if I can reach this, uh, an applique tacking iron. So these are really helpful. It'll get your fabric nice and flat and we want to have our fa fabric smooth and flat because we're actually making seams in the hoop. So I'll see you in the next part and we'll get ready to sew. So here we are at the sewing machine. I've already sewn color number one, but I want to show you something. This has like a bazillion color changes. Well, not a bazillion, it's got 36. But all the ones down through number 17 are the piecing. And I'm just alternating colors here. We're trying to get the machine to stop so that we can do some interaction with the hoop. So it really doesn't have as many colors as you might think. It's not got as many different colors. Now the other colors are the decorative stitches, the motifs. And I've put them in as separate colors. And the reason I do that is so I can mix and match and choose on the fly. And I've already chosen my colors, so um, sometimes I'll choose them ahead of time and sometimes I choose them at the machine. This is one of those kind of designs I like to sew at a single needle machine because it's much easier to change the threads. So let's take a look at what we've got sewn right now. So this is color number one and two. You can see my chalk lines, and you may be able to see the numbers. So this is exactly like what you would get if you had a printed template for um, paper piecing or foundation piecing at a sewing machine. And this is technically not required for you to sew color number two because it's just these placement lines. But I do like to sew this because these are going to be my seam lines, and it helps me match things up later on. Now, you might want to skip it if these numbers are going to show through. They're going to end up being under two layers of seam allowance and another layer of fabric. So it's unlikely that they're going to show through. But you never know, they might on, on your project. So you could skip this color. The next color, which we'll sew, is uh, another placement line and it's going to sew just a quarter inch outside there. And those are our guidelines for placement because we're going to be matching up along the seam allowances and and this is just real helpful. Once again, not technically required, but helpful. Now, what you can do with color number one and two, remember this is color number one and two, I've said both of them in white, by the way, is you can, if you want to resize this design, resize the design, copy color one and two out to another file, and then use this as your template guide. So you just cut out these pieces, you'd have to add your seam allowances around the outside, but it would be an accurate placement guide. So let's put it back in the machine and sew the next color. Color number three has been sewn and this outline is where we're going to place our first piece. So, um, Let's see if I can set that up so you can actually see it. Here is piece number one, and it says, place this piece face up. All others are going to go face down. So I'm going to look at my design, and I'm going to see where it's going to go. It's kind of disorienting because I sewed this sideways. Then I'm going to take my glue stick 
put a little dab on my fabric, peel off my paper, and place my fabric down. I'm just going to place it right inside those stitching lines. So there we go. The next step is going to zigzag tack that down. So if your zigzag tack down doesn't quite catch, it's not a big deal because we're going to be placing pieces all around here. This just helps hold it down for a little bit. So I'm going to take my next piece, piece number two, and see where that line is. That's going to go right there. So I like to line it up so I make sure that I know what I'm doing. Then I'm going to peel off the paper. And then I'm going to flip it over face down because all the other pieces except the first one go face down. And see how I've engineered that corner so it matches up? So it's easy to match up your pieces. So we'll just drop the presser foot and start sewing again. Now I'm ready to flip my piece over, so I'll just flip it over and I'm going to finger press it nice and flat. And I want to make sure that it extends beyond this outside edge because we're going to put an applique out here. And after all our pieces are stitched down, just before we get ready to sew the satin stitch, we're going to trim off this excess fabric. So another thing I like to do is dab a little glue stick on there. So I'll just put a little, little smear, a little dab, and that will help hold that down. And another thing you can do is use a tacking iron and just kind of flatten out that seam a bit. So the next stitch that's going to sew is just a stitch, a straight stitch around that's going to hold this in place. All our seams are a double pass. This tack down out here is just a single pass. So I'm doing all of this with regular embroidery thread. I'm not using any special construction thread. Now, we're pulling our hoop in and out quite a bit. This machine will tell me if my hoop isn't latched down. Your machine may not do that. That's something you have to watch for. Make sure that your hoop is fully engaged and latched into position. So we'll drop the presser foot, press start. So now we're looking for piece three. Here's piece three going to go here. So I want to make sure that I know the orientation. Then I'm going to peel off the paper and line it up. Drop the presser foot and start. Flip the piece over, finger press it, probably have to pull the hoop off if you want to do the glue stick, which I like to do. It just takes a little dab. We just want enough to hold it down so that it gets so nice and flat. Tacking iron. If you're using a tacking iron and you have a plastic presser foot, don't let the tacking iron press, touch the presser foot because it can melt. So we're just going to continue around uh, step four, piece four is ready to go on. And all we do is continue building around our design. So let's keep going.
finger press. And oh, I didn't get that one placed too accurately. See how it's not, it's kind of inside this seam allowance? It's going to be okay, but you've got to watch for that. If you line up your pieces too far over, you could have a placement malfunction, a wardrobe malfunction in your design. And didn't do the glue stick, did I? Because I was talking. Glue stick. Now what happens if your piece doesn't go over this first line? Well, then you should probably just rip it off, back up a color change, recut your piece if it's too small, or just adjust the placement. Let's take it off the machine so we can give it a, a look. Look how pretty that is. That's all paper piecing, foundation piecing rather, in the hoop. And if we wanted to, we could skip ahead to the applique step, trim off all our fabric, do the applique, and just leave it like this. You might want to do that if your fabrics are pretty busy. Now our design is pretty busy. It has a lot of decorative stitches on it. Some of them are along the seam lines. Those are called motif runs. And so you'll just have a line of decorative stitching. Then there are others where you'll see that there's like a rose here, there's a daisy up here. All the motif runs sew first. Those other decorative elements sew after all of those runs sew. So if you want to leave out any of those, because it's a different color change, you could easily advance one color on your sewing machine or go into your software and delete them so you don't accidentally sew them. So I'm not going to trim this off until I'm ready to stitch my applique. And I'm getting ready to sew my decorative stitches. I'll sew a couple and then we'll come back when I'm done and see how to do the applique part. So I'm ready for my first decorative color. And up until this point, I've only used one thread. So you can sew everything up to this point in the same color. Actually, you could sew the, whole, sew the whole design in one color if you wanted to, but I think it looks more crazy patchy if I do different colors. So I'm ready to change to my next color. And what I want you to notice is that I am going to use these scissors, and I'm going, you can't see this in the video, but I clipped the thread right before the first thread guide and I pulled the thread through the needle. You want to do that rather than pull the thread backwards through the needle. It's just not good practice to do that. So I'll re-thread the machine. And we'll sew the next motif. So the, the colors are going to continue to change. I'm going to continue to put in new colors that I've already picked, and I'm going to keep sewing these decorative stitches. And since you've already seen me sew some, I'm going to just catch up with you in a little bit when I get all the, the decorative motifs in, and we'll see what to do next. So all my decorative motifs have been sewn, and I'm ready to trim off this excess fabric beyond the stitching line. So I like to use some curved scissors for this, and we'll just start trimming. You want to trim right up to that line, but not through it. That should be pretty good. So now I'm going to put it back in the machine. We'll sew the satin stitch 
and we'll sew the last motif over the satin stitch and then we'll sew the monogram in the middle. Now change the thread and put in the, the last color for the last motif. Is this that little bars that go over the satin stitch? And lastly, we'll sew the monogram. Now remember, the monogram is not included, so you'll have to add this yourself, and that's why it's sewing last. There we are. There's our finished design. It actually took me longer to pick the fabrics and pick the thread colors than it did to sew. It really doesn't take that long for the sewing time, but it sure speeds up this kind of stitching. Now, I'm ready to unhoop this, trim it up, and turn it into my journal cover, and we'll cover making the journal cover or book cover in a separate video. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.